Lots of raw news still in uh, going around, isn't there? Um, so we've talked a lot about, obviously, the king, uh, his medical complications, and also about the Princess of Wales. Now, we haven't been speculating on what procedures she had. What we do know is she was in hospital for a long period of time. That, to me, suggests that actually this was important surgery, uh, and we can speculate as to what that was. There's a lot of controversy, though, because we heard that she was in a coma. That was reported by some news outlets. Is that true? Well, in Spain, uh, they published uh, a, a, an article suggesting that she had been in a coma. Of course, that was flatly denied by uh, sources within Kensington Palace. But it just shows it's quite hard. Yes, there's a sort of um, a rule here. We had the statements and people have respected it. The king obviously went on uh, and was very public about the condition that he was being treated for in the prostate having his minor prostate procedure. So he was very forthright. But obviously with Kate, with 14 days in hospital, you know, it doesn't take, it, it's fairly obvious, it, it wasn't straightforward. Whatever she was um, going through and has been, and is recovering from now back at home. But clearly one of the problems is how do you control the foreign press? And they've all, you know, this is the same in America or everything. So respecting people's privacy it is quite hard when it comes to the overseas press, but clearly those speculations, um, presumably wide off the mark, but clearly, um, you know, people don't want to be reading that kind of thing if, if they're just making it up. Well, well, that's a very good point. And this was made in Fiesta by Concha Calleja. Um, she said the princess's life was in great danger after the operation, after speaking to an aide from the royal household in a completely off-the-record manner. And she went on to say the post-op period didn't go very well. And, of course, the problem here, in, and the palace saying it's absolute nonsense, the problem here is, of course, these column inches, if you say something like that and you have an exclusive, even if you've made it up, you actually sell more news papers well exactly and this is the problem because there is the you, you give a, a patient whoever it, that person is whether it's royal family or at the other extreme private and patient as you know patient confidentiality is very vitally important and the uh, princess of wales can be afforded that as well but clearly someone like her there are always people going to be speculating dinner party gossip you name it what you know what have people heard what's going on i know that that is part of the discussion but clearly it needs to remain private because whatever it is clearly as you would know 14 days people staying in hospital for 14 days is more of a rarity now so clearly it's not straightforward but whatever it is it needs to remain private um, until the palace feel it is appropriate to release whatever information they feel so would be appropriate for, to respect Kate's wishes. I mean, this has happened before, if I remember rightly, with uh, with Harry, didn't it? With Afghanistan, there was a media blackout over him, and yet that was broken by a foreign news source. Yes, and that then put his security in compromise, because clearly he would be seen as a target uh, and a high-profile target for the Taliban at the time. So it was, it is always difficult. And we've always had sort of the, the foreign press have always plowed their own furrow when it comes to that. But, you know, probably there may be cases in this country when things have been kept private elsewhere, but our press may have gone out on a, a limb and reported. So it has give and take here, but clearly something like this, if, you know, suggesting that she was in a coma and all these things which the palace have fiercely denied, um, then it just feels, um, you know, they've gone slightly beyond what is maybe deemed respectful. But what controls can you put in place? Absolutely none. It's up to the Spanish authorities to do something with, with their own press if they felt it was inappropriate. Now, as I said, of course, the King has been very open about his prostate procedure, and I think that's a great thing. We saw the number of people going to Prostate Cancer UK's website go up. I think 13,000 people actually logged on to that as a result. That's all brilliant. And, of course, I think in terms of awareness, that's helped dramatically. But also, with Kate being in hospital, the mood of the public also has shifted, I think, that actually people have warmed much more to the King, was always going to be a worry after the death of his late mother they are now very popular as far as i can see yeah the polls come out suggesting their popularity has increased as a result of uh, uh being in hospital and for the king yes i think it is uh, you know he is mindful that 
you know, he, he, he to ensure that he is deemed to be popular and doing something like he did and being very um, open about his condition, I think can only be seen as a good thing because he's helping other people. And presumably the role of the monarch, yes, is to be seen, to be out there, but also to uh, bring the country along with you. And clearly this is a very positive move. And it's actually been very interesting this week. You've seen the Queen now doing very much some of the heavy yeah. lifting, getting out there in the front line. And when you think you know, she's been carrying on with her public visits and obviously saying that he's, he's recovering, I'm sure the King is totally frustrated that he's back at home and can't get out and about because he's, he's, he's not the, the easiest person to pin down. He's a bit <laughs> of a workaholic. So clearly he will be frustrated, but he's obviously medical advice is saying, right, you've got to take your time before you get back out on the front line. But the Queen, straight away, out there. And it is interesting that uh, the Princess Royal and the Queen are now the heavy lifters on behalf of the royal family, while two members recover. And clearly, for the Prince of Wales, he's um, basically on home duties, uh, helping his wife recover and obviously looking after three children as well. But he remains very popular as well. The The big question I have is Harry and Meghan. Here we go again, talking about them. Now, now we heard, didn't we, uh, early, was it earlier this week, but about Netflix, they've got exciting projects coming up, and I was like, oh. But their yeah. popularity isn't so good. No, and it's continuing to, to take a hit. Now, clearly, Harry's got issues with Africa Parks, the charity he's yeah. involved with. They've got serious allegations around some of the treatment of some of the people that work for them. And, and of course, Harry is a board director of Africa Parks. He's been uh, singularly very silent. He made some initial statements when the allegations came out last year. He's since been promoted to a board of directors. But clearly, uh, you would feel that he would be uh, leading from the front line that, that his organization needs to be investigating these allegations very seriously indeed. But also, we saw them come out with a sort of bit of PR about uh, um, really targeting the, the United States market about, you know, internet security for children. And it was a bit of a puffy PR, rather word salad -y thing that they produced last week. Now, the intention is entirely honourable. But again, they, they were trying to get some PR coverage. But again, it just looks as if they're trying too hard. And then you hear, as you just alluded to, Netflix say, well, they've got some... Uh, to, uh, projects in early development well as far as i know most produced production companies have things in early development what's important what's been given the green light to actually be made you can have ideas but what are they actually going to put their money into to make sure that they can produce something that moves on from their documentary last year and uh, clearly how they're going to um, manage their 20 million budget uh, or signing on fee. Netflix will drive a hard bargain, I'm pretty sure. Well, well, because... that's right. And also, as far as I understand, they're four years into a five-year deal. They haven't actually done very much for their 100 million US dollars. No, they haven't. And when you think about it, OK, their documentary was very successful. You can't deny the fact that that was successful. But what can they do that now takes it on that it's not just having a pop at the royal family and putting their story... There's got to be a time when they have to stop doing that and actually then look ahead and actually start uh, moving on in the life that they want and do the kind of projects that they will uh, uh, be involved in, but also things that sell. And, and that, I think, is going to be very hard for them because uh, they seem to want to do a lot of earnest stuff, which, fine, it's it got its place. But will it sell? That's going to be the interesting thing. So just talking about Netflix, there's another story <laughs> doing the rounds as well, because obviously I said about Harry and Meghan and Netflix, but at the same time, that infamous interview with Prince Andrew and Emily Maitlis, that's being made into a Netflix film. Well, there's a lot of projects around that. I think some of there's going to be uh, films about it being made about that interview. But what I think Netflix is saying, or I'm uh, reading the reports, want to do a sort of life and times of Prince Andrew, the rise and fall of the Duke of York, which obviously, um, you know, one stage he was uh, fighting in the Falklands and a sort of dynamic member of the royal family. But clearly his involvement with Jeffrey Epstein and that interview has sent him from a fall from grace, I think, is really. And so that's what I think they're looking to do is a documentary. The production company, by all accounts, has a pretty good track record in this area. So it will be interesting to see who they can get along to. I don't know whether spill the beans or tell the story as it is. Um, that'll be interesting. But 
for all, you know, Prince Andrew is, as, as we know, still going to be persona non grata for a very long time. And these documentaries mm -hmm. will only heap more sort of uh, pressure on him, him not not to try and make a make a comeback and kept in 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 the shadows. Well, it's extraordinary, isn't it? Netflix, very much the the bond between these two stories and these characters, of course, uh, and the implications for the royal family as well.